So in today's Baldur's Gate 3 video, we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite classes, the Sorcerer. It's an amazing spell nuker that can literally wreak havoc on the battlefield because of its meta magic, which further amplifies many of its very strong spells that it has access from early on. We're gonna focus on the Draconic Bloodline, as well as a bunch of tips and tricks to make the most out of it, from the character creation all the way to the end game. Now, in terms of how to create this character, we have quite a number of routes. Obviously, we can go with a Dragonborn, it's totally possible, I think it fits thematically very well. We get some extra resistances to the spells of your choice. There's also the Tiefling with Asmodeus sub-race, which again comes with fire resistance and some extra bonuses in there and stuff like the Fiery Rebuke. However, I want you to consider the Half-Elf, which in my opinion is probably the best and there are a few reasons for that one of them is because we have access to dark vision which is an amazing one to have we have fey ancestry which kind of gives us an advantage against any type of charm effects and finally the most important is civil militia now this is actually an underrated skill because it gives us proficiency not just with light armor but with shields as well we're not gonna use light armor too much since we have the draconic bloodline passive that gives us high ac However, having the ability for free to equip shields provide us a ton of extra AC to basically become very, very tanky for a spellcaster from early on. I believe you can get easy 18 AC, even up to 20 from literally just the starting levels. And did I mention that we're also getting beards? Yes, half-elves also get beards. Now, the choice of sub race here is going to be the high half-elf, since this is going to give us access to a bunch of interesting early candy trips we can pick between utility where we can also go with damage i picked in this case the firebolt as instead of it i'm going to pick something else later on once i level up with the class for the starting spells obviously we're gonna have magic missile as well as chromatic orb eventually we're gonna switch one of these for something much much better but early on this can help quite a bit obviously the subclass is going to be draconic bloodline however for the dragon ancestor i'm going with the red or fire this is going to give us access to a very powerful fire damage effect it kind of works in close to melee range and early on it can have some really devastating damage on it for the background there are a few options to consider there's the noble there's the guild artisan i think that these two probably fit the best you can totally go with the guild artisan if you want to but in my case I went with the noble just because I want to RP a little bit plus it gives me some nice insight and religion which there are a few dialogues in there that I want to succeed with my plus to religion proficiency in terms of the abilities yeah you can go with the safe route and go 16 into charisma and 16 into dexterity this is going to help you to deal damage but also not fall too much when it comes to your initiative and also gain a plus 3 AC because you have 16 dexterity so you can go with that however there's also an option to go 17 into charisma invest the first two points from ability improvement reach 19 with that and then get plus one to immediately reach 20 when you get to the hag and complete that side of um, her mission so you can totally do that however for this video i'm going to go with 16 16 and obviously 14 into constitution so this is going to ensure that we have plenty of damage we're not going to be like the last in line when it comes to our initiative plus we're going to survive quite a bit our starting ac since we have that militia upgrade over there is going to let us reach 18 ac very easily and we're going to have a lot of survivability from basically level one now at level two we start unlocking some very interesting passives also one additional spell in this case i'm going to go with the thunder wave since it's an amazing kind of like damage plus pushback in case we want to like just send enemies flying from high places it can definitely Definitely save you a ton now for the class passives this is where things enhance our class even more because we have these meta magic passives that enhance our abilities in very interesting ways now the two best i would suggest early on are the distance spell which is going to increase the range of our spells by 50 percent the second one i would recommend is the twin spell since this is going to let us cast a spell a second time if it's a projectile of sorts instead of targeting just one enemy we can target 
two of them, so essentially doubling our damage and wreaking more havoc on the battlefield. This is literally one of the best to have in the entire game. We also have the option to replace spell, but for now we're not gonna like do that, we're just going to continue as it is. Once you reach level 3, you get to unlock a bunch of other stuff, like spell slots, you also get um, the spell passive over there to cast your meta magic even more, but uh, we also gain access to a bunch of very interesting tier 2 spells, like Cloud of Daggers, Scorching Ray, even something like the Misty Step. So it depends a bit on your playstyle, do you want an escape, in that case, go with the Misty Step, if enemies attack you too often, it can definitely be a good choice, otherwise if you think your damage is a bit lacking then Cloud of Daggers is very very strong, or even Scorching Ray, this is something that we're gonna pick eventually anyway at about level 4 or 5, but um, it's a matter of choice, I would recommend either of these and you're gonna be just fine. For the class passive we're gonna get another access to the meta magic and in this case I recommend the Quickened spell. This is going to make our spells that cost an action to cost a bonus action instead. What that translates to in gameplay is that we can basically use both an action and a bonus action to cast the same spell two times. So essentially we have a ton of avenues to multicast just because of these. Now at level 4 is when we also get access to our feats and like I said previously our main ability is the most important because this is going to help us with the damage rolls, with ability checks and all that, so charisma should be immediately upgraded to 18 or maybe 19 if you started with 17 from the character creation and have the extra point from the hag if you do that mission in the swamp area but otherwise I'm going with 18 in this case. This is also when we're we're gonna want to pick mirror image, this helps a ton to increase our AC, this is going to make us even more tanky as a result and early on this is going to completely change how you see your character and how squishy you feel. You're not gonna feel squishy at all if you run with this. At level 5 is when things become a lot more interesting because this is when we get access to fireball as well as a bunch of other tier 3 spells. However, the strongest tier is the fireball so we're gonna take that and for the replace spell we can just replace chromatic orb since in this case this is no longer useful fireball already replaces it for the purpose of this build and you can go with something else i suggest going with haste because this lets you basically cast another action or gain another action within that turn say for example you already used all your resources you can just pop a haste and basically have another free action on top you become faster but do keep in mind that this comes with a downside you're going to feel lethargic after this so you might lose a bit on initiative and somebody else might come in front of you or maybe even attack you because of it. At level 6 we're gonna get into some other interesting stuff. New spells will unlock but also a couple of subclass features, one of them is elemental affinity, damage. So when you cast a spell that deals damage of that type associated with your draconic ancestry, you add your charisma modifier to the damage. Now in this case, for us it's going to be fire, which means we're gonna add our charisma modifier to that fire damage and this in turn is going to make it even stronger than before. But elemental affinity resistance is also pretty good, so when you cast a spell that deals damage of that type associated with your draconic ancestry you can spend one sorcery point to gain resistance to that damage type however it's not gonna be that needed since we naturally have resistance anyway from the draconic bloodline but we also have access to other tier 3 spells there are some strong options here to pick between I really enjoy lightning bolt it kind of shoots this very strong beam of electricity in a pretty decently long line that just shocks enemies at level 7 we're gonna get tier 4 spells and probably the best here is going to be Blight, this is an amazing single damage dealer that you really want, it comes with necrotic damage and not many enemies actually resist necrotic damage so it's usually going to be a safe bet to have. For replace spells, now it depends what you have left from before, you can take a lightning bolt if you don't want that and maybe want to use something else instead, maybe ice storm could be an amazing replacer since the AoE on that is even better and this provides bludgeoning damage so again not one of those most common resistances that exist in this game, 
plus this creates a slippery area so enemies might fall prone and provide you some other types of advantages. Once we reach level 8, slow is one of my favorite. You can target up to 6 enemies and provide some very strong debuffs. So your affected entity movement speed is halved. Also its armor class and dexterity saving throw is reduced by 2 so it's easier to hit and you deal more damage. The entity cannot take actions or make more than one attack per turn and can even only take either an action or a bonus action for that turn so you're just reducing the number of things they can do in that turn on top of just slowing them down and debuffing them this is also when we get access to our second round of feats so again you can go with the charisma in this case and just provide it a buff to 20 this is going to immediately put you at the cap and it's already going to turn you into an amazing damage dealer but you can also go with some of the other options and that's elemental adept in this case fire because we're going to focus on fire damage so this is going to let you bypass any resistance that the enemy has since we are using fire and since a lot of enemies are or have resistance to some degree to fire this can let us completely bypass that and deal damage plus we cannot roll a one with fire spells at level nine we gain some extra spell slots in there plus another tier five spell this time around so another number of very strong options telekinesis is something that i really enjoy enjoy actually because you can literally lift up most enemies and throw them over the edge or throw them into some of their teammates and use them as props to deal damage to their own teammates otherwise you can go with wall of fire this can let you create a very long fire area of effect that can deal damage to a lot of enemies however it is a concentration spell so if somebody breaks concentration it's going to be problematic and uh, yeah it's again a matter of choice i went with the fire since we want to stack fire damage effects now at level 10 we're gonna get another meta magic upgrade i went with a subtle spell just in case somebody silences us this is going to help me a bit to avoid being uh, not able to use spell while silenced and you also have the replacer you can replace one of the spells from previously with something else but around 11 is when we get to unlock the Zintegrate. First of all, the damage roll on it is insane. Second of all, it's force damage, so not many enemies have resistance to it, so you're going to hit a ton of them without any issue. But overall, this is how I would play the class. This is something that I keep in the backside just in case something goes wrong, and I immediately pump up that meta magic and double cast my starting spell. This is going to let me destroy a number of enemies before they even have a chance to have their own turn and maybe even provide some extra ways to CC maybe some of them or provide some extra buffs to my party. Otherwise, you can go with the Quicken spell from this point on, which is going to let you cast another spell a second time, which in this case is going to consume your bonus action slot. So that's going to be a double cast once more and again even more damage maybe incorporate a slow in this case just so that in the next turns you have an advantage against them and they don't move as much and don't cast as many abilities if somebody even gets close to you a quick misty step can easily get you out of trouble otherwise you can use mirror image and tank a lot of that or just like do anything else you want to in your arsenal to take care of them before they even reach you but otherwise this class is one of the best most fun to play with and fits that mage fantasy probably the best even compared to the wizard which does technically have access to more spells but none of them can be amplified in such a cool way this is it with the video so if you played with a sorcerer let me know down below which races have you picked for it or if your build is different than mine in the meantime i recommend checking out some of my other videos including a big breakdown of some of the best feats or this really awesome paladin build that i heavily encourage every new player to try out thanks so much for watching and until next time